Hello YouTube. How you doing? It's uh, about three o'clock in the morning here in England and um, I'm quite awake and I'm going to stay awake all night and um, so I've been planning to make a video, I've got a few things to talk about and um, 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 um. And yes, so this might be a long one actually. I'm going to drag it out. And as you can see, Christmas tree, Merry Christmas. It's uh, December the 18th, going on 19th. And um, the, the big thing I want to talk about is gender male and female and all its massiveness I mean we've got the people who are going in the wrong direction to this no gender you know I mean that is total dead end stuff there's masculinity and there's femininity in the whole world in nature it's obviously there for a reason and I think quite often in nature we we see a kind of a manifestation or should I say in the physical world a manifestation of what is going on on the dominant dimension which is where our souls are and uh, our soul a complete soul is male and female just like God in the image of God and um, I'll stick this in, I'll stick a bit of scripture in um, you know me and scripture I don't agree with all of it I think it's misinterpreted but there was a when they were asking Yeshua questions the Sadducees were asking Yeshua they were trying to trick him out and they were saying um, if a man marries a woman <clears throat> and then he dies, it's written in the law that the brother could then marry the woman. And they said, if that happens seven times in the kingdom of heaven, who, who would be married to the woman? And he kind of chastised them a bit, saying, you're trying to catch me out. But then made the comment that um, when a, a man marries a woman they become one um, and then sort of say, stating what God puts together let no man tear asunder um, so I can't remember how he chastised them sorry but you'll have to find that in the Bible and um, so back to gender anyway well that was still quite related to gender I need to chill out, really, just chill. But demanding audiences and your spare time is precious. Although, in reality, people really do waste their time. Waste their time on dead ends. Hmm. So, we've got two expressions of the eternal soul. One is a masculine and one is feminine. Now, we are different. We are equal, but we are different. And you can feel this in your soul. We can receive love from our brothers and sisters. We can receive the opposite as well. Obviously love is better because love begets love. So it's better for everyone. <coughs> so I've noticed a man's love 
kind of comes here and and there's a, definitely there's a warmth about it and also sort of a kind of invigorating as well as all love is and a woman's love I feel felt comes from a different direction more from beneath can be taken carnally if you're a male obviously if you're in that carnal mode then you're not going to receive the love into the heart of your soul which is the main part of you and the most powerful and best part and um, so better if it can go in there but anyway it's it's different type of love it's it's it is essentially different now in the physical world this manifests i feel in my opinion that um if you take god so we're in god the universe is a physical manifestation of god on this di physical dimension and and god it a father male is light and female is substance so whatever substance it is if it's rock water and um and again mother god's love feels different to father god's love and mother god coming from beneath the love from feminine expression of God Jesus is very sweet comforting and safe and encouraging and you know that that aspects those aspects and father God's love is more of this sort of inspirational invigorating coming from above and you know so to understand the differences with male and female is is really really important and 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 is very confused uh, especially when you know there's hate for the opposite sex and this is what's probably causing transgender and people feeling that they're homosexual. Um, like I've said before, I don't think God would put a female soul in a male body, or vice versa. But if there have been um, people experimenting with genetic tweaks, that may have happened in this modern age. But, uh, don't know the answer to that. Um, and so, and also, um, what I've mentioned before about the moon cycles. So today, on December the eighteenth, we're on a pretty much a, a half going moon. We've still got a couple of days really till we get there. And so, in this moon cycle men are currently at the top at their peak in the in the sort of natural wave that two months apart from peak to peak or trough to trough and women are a couple of days away from being at their lowest ebb but what I've noticed over the last few months because I've been thinking about this for quite a while a few months maybe five or six for maybe is that as soon as you sort of feel like you've got to your lowest ebb and you've started to come up that that feels really good it's like you've broken down and then and then you're coming back up but back to the feminine and masculine you know I, I, I'm noticing now when I'm in a group of people how you know how it's all how they're all interacting so you know, and a woman and a man is, you know, the woman's got that substance, that 
deepness. It's why they're mentally stronger. They sort of, if you look at the solar system, we've got one sun. So male love is very big and strong, but it's just that one thing. It's like we're physically stronger. And, and then we've got all these planets, you know, various planets, and they've got moons, and it's quite, you know, complex. And I quite like that in a sense that it shows that women are sort of mentally stronger uh, and sort of these deeper levels within a feminine <laughs> psyche which I profess not to understand very well being male. Uh, so, yeah, it's all there. And um trying to get these uh, people who just follow the Bible and if it ain't scriptural, it ain't coming into my mind type thing, you know. Not going to get you far. They've had plenty of time to study the Bible and, you know, as we get further and further away from the time, the um, the understanding of it could, you know, go astray because language changes and all sorts. I mean, my mate um, showed me something. I don't know how. Anyway, this guy has written a book and all about the Lord's Prayer in its original Aramaic. Now, somehow he seems to have turned our Father who art in heaven into about four lines of text which I can't remember it all but the part of there was our birth of mother and father so I thought that was good well, the truth is coming out like right so I think I've done gender But yeah, I think it's really good to have more of an understanding about what's going on. So if you know know where you are in the moon cycle, so you know in a month's time it's going to be the opposite. Women are going to be at the top and men at the bottom. And yeah, we need to look after each other in that way. Um, good to know that, you know, we are different, we're not the same, completely different, and to know that we've all got a predestined other half to us, that, that is us, is, we will be one consciousness with our soulmate once we've grown more in love and stuff. Okay, so I'm done on gender now. Um, Antichrist nearly exposed. I just thought, last couple of weeks, last few weeks, have been really puzzling on the old news front. Um, if you only listen to BBC news, you've heard just a couple of glimpses of um, the other side of the coin. And a very brief question posed to show the other side of the coin, but it's at least that's an improvement maybe on a bit before. And then you've got RT on YouTube who, who are, you know, showing the other side of the coin. And, you know, the methods involved, I mean, RT are very out there with evidence, they, they're open. You just get that feeling that they're being completely open. Whereas on the Western side, it's very much the same old, same old, um, telling us nothing, but using um, lots of, you know, 
fancy terms and crap and lying too you know I mean it's quite clear that well evidence just came out that the original chemical weapons attack in Syria which is the reason that they're going after Assad or they're using that as the reason was um, evidence that it was from the rebels so <laughs> You know, it's just so obvious that it's a setup, and Obama's time in office is very short now. Whereas they thought Clinton was going to win, Clinton was another, you know, signed up to the sickos that have been, that have had their hands on the, what do you call that thing on the ship, <laughs> the steering wheel. And now the time is short. They definitely didn't want Trump to win. And they're just coming out with... It's just like they're so desperate now. You know, the way they're acting is just... It's just like they don't care if they get found out anymore because they're so desperate. And I've got my own theories on how they've lost their power. Things I've said in re um, previous videos. We'll see, because it's it's all unravelling, you know. And like I said before, how it's sort of always happening, but slowly. I haven't, I haven't written it down, but I suppose as I did make a video saying, you know, God's going to come on November the 30th, or it's going to be a trigger, it's going to start it all. I don't particularly know what the trigger was. Um, there was a... Uh, a new paedophilia thing coming out which I think is huge there's, a, there's another thing on my list and there was um, Israel attacked uh, one of its neighbours I think into Syria um, that whole area is obviously pretty big but kind of both these things have sort of happened before. They're not, it's not like the first time. So I, I don't know yet what particular trigger took place. If anything did, or whether it was just a lot more personal to me. I mean, a couple of days before, I did feel like something may have happened on the 29th. Just like a, a new level of... Uh, <coughs> all the souls <clears throat> kind of just on an, on a new level and it may have been the 28th or the 27th that well it, there were two days where I had pretty major um, things happening in meditation <clears throat> the first one was um, felt God just completely enveloped in God and I've, I've kind of got near that feeling before but um, it felt too claustrophobic before before I had the trust in God that I've got now and yes it was scary you know I suppose any time there's a first time it's it's overwhelming and that's you have to kind of just resign yourself to it and let it happen and that's what it's all about meditation let it happen you know you can shake out of it if you absolutely thought you had to but there's so many well quite a few instances instances you know where the, my heart really Boom, 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 you know. 
and you start having paranoid thoughts, oh, I'm going to have a heart attack or something like that, you know, that's not helpful. That's why it's always good to be calm and remember God is always calm. <clears throat> what was I saying? <laughs> so, yeah, so that was on November the 27th, I think. And then the next day, the next day I wondered why am I doing this to myself. And I'm not sure whether I'm supposed to share this or not. So it, and you know, if it freaks you out, just don't think about it. And we're masters of that, masters of it. My mum even says she doesn't like to look at the stars; it freaks her out. <laughs> so I'm going to say it anyway. I I've been um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I I think I probably have about God having a mother and father. And brothers and sisters like we have and then if that the mother and father of God has a mother and father and brothers and sisters and and I was thinking how the physical manifestation in the universe is like uh, when our souls were created a, a, a little physical universe was created in God's universe and that was indicative of you know this universe is 15 to 30 billion years old that's how old God is and um, as a thought suddenly occurred to me how many other universes there are we quite possibly very similar situations to what we've got here on Earth. Other seventh Christs on in these other universes, and it what scared me is I thought parallel universe, and then I think I may have mentioned this. Sorry, and then um, I realised it's not parallel universes; they're all going to be completely unique. But still, the enormity of it. And I thought, why do I do this to myself? Because I was feeling it. I was feeling the truth of it for the first time. So that was big. So, that, you know, that was very close to November the 30th. And so, in a sense, what was happening to me 19 years ago, November the 30th, when I sort of got that major thing and then thought, <laughs> I'm going to give this up. I'm going I'm to go mad. You know, I kind of got a bit close to that, if you like. Um, because suddenly the awareness of that many universes can be pretty mind-blown. And in the last few days, I've accepted there's always going to be an element of mystery. I'm not, all, I'm not ever going to have the answer to everything. And, you know, just knowing a few things for sure um, is enough quite often. To love is the answer. That is pretty much enough for anything. Okay. So I'll talk about, yeah, so paedophilia. And, well, you know, they, they, they did a big bust in Norway, paedophilia ring, and it's the higher echelons of society. It's the lawyers, it's the members in parliament, it's them lot. They, obviously not, it's not all of them, but the paedophile rings include these people. So could well be, well lawyers become judges, members of parliament become lord members or whatever they have in different countries, I don't know. And, and it's a what is it? I mean, there isn't words to describe this, but wow, needs to come out. And there have been um, each time with the you know first, well, first of all we had the priests. It was mainly Catholic priests because they're not allowed to marry. 
then we had the uh, Jim will fix it and stuff. And at that point, there were these mentions of, you know, there's some lord who there's allegations against him. And they're really trying to keep that on the, well, there are obviously people really trying to keep that on the lowdown. And there's, um, and then when these last football ones came out, again, there was this mention of this, this lord. So, you know, one thing, if it's like that in Norway, you know, Norway get their shit from England, so it's not good, but it is good if it comes out, and it, and it's sick. Is sick. This bust in Norway that I know through like a lot of data was seized, sort of incriminating data, videos, penetration. You know, the newscasters were basically struggling because it was so disgusting to um, describe. And there was there, there is involvement with some sort of satanic practices um, and we know there's evidence of this in, in America as well with George Bush and the like who go and worship this owl and yeah so you know I think this is going to shock people And this will eventually come out more and more because there's people again. And in the police as well. So you've got all these organisations where it's supposed to be protecting you and that's where there's a bunch of sickos getting away with it because they've got their hands on the steering wheel. So, but they were trained. They didn't want Brexit and they didn't want Trump. And they're not getting their way. And they haven't got much time left. And tomorrow, with the Trump, we'll know if he's definitely going to be president or not. All right, um, DNA. I've uh, been a bit interested in DNA, so you know, watched a couple of videos, uh, lectures. Uh, MIT do some good ones on YouTube so um, what I found was interesting is obviously this junk DNA which from about 2007 they started to admit that it's not all useless and it's, although it's not common knowledge they do know that in fact every single little bit of your DNA is working and so DNA basically is these uh, two sh two strands helix but each say bar will only be one thing it'll either be an AT or a CG so you could say it'll either be an A or a C on one side or a a T or a G on the other side so they won't mix up any more than that but you've got billions of these bars in a DNA strain that contains all the information about how you work and um, so very simple things a bit like binary code isn't it but um, the way the way um, the way the DNA will duplicate is to split in half and then grow another half because you know if it's an A on that side it's going to be a T on that side and vice versa so they can break off and duplicate basically that's how that's how it, it works and the way the dead ones go but stuff grows doesn't it <laughs> so that's how DNA grows that's how it knows what to do from the DNA. Now, so in this junk DNA, so they, they so they found out you know little bits of DNA. They've sort of worked out what it does by sort of somehow managing to cut it up and see what cocks up. 
And but so what they found in the where they thought it was junk, basically the the, the sequences in this in the DNA to tell these other little parts of the DNA how to function. And the, the, there's quite a bit of cross-checking that goes on and it, DNA can be read backwards and it can, there can be bits in the middle that apply to bits on the end and it's very, very, very uh, special. And um, so, when if they make a change to the DNA, quite likely is that three generations later, the DNA will have reverted back to its normal state because there are there's a lot built into the DNA to avoid cock-ups. It's a, a very clever thing and because there's billions of bars, you know, it's going to be very difficult to ever get your head round it and in fact, you know, just need to learn to leave all that's well alone, like the Aussies say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. DNA is not broken. DNA is perfect. <laughs> like everything that in God is perfect. Uh, apart from us, because we're right at the beginning of our eternal life and needed to learn the rights and wrongs. What not to do and what to do. So that's good news, I think. Also makes me less worried about eating something that's been DNA modified because, I don't know, what can it do to my DNA? Because my DNA will sort itself out, be fine. Mm. Why English is number one. So, yeah. So... I think a lot of people would agree that English is the international language and that being the case God must have wanted it to be so at this time at least um, and it looks like eventually the world will decide that yes it would be quite a good idea to have one international language that we can communicate around the world. And I think English is being accepted and people are kind of, you know, taking it in and maybe adding a few words if, if there was something lacking. And uh, I think that's, that's good. So why English, right? Well, okay, so there's a billion Chinese speaking Chinese or whatever and there's um, a lot of Indians speaking Hindi but you know you couldn't give it to the Indians because Pakistan would go mad and we're not going to change to Indian now are we? Now, the Chinese are kind of still using a more primitive language because it's more like hieroglyphics. They got way too many letters. So I think a language that has an alphabet, you know, 26 letters, is is quite a good, it's like a like like a code and you can make up words from it and I think that that wins. So then um, you know, the European languages, then they have this uh, alphabet. A and Russia does, and, um, well, obviously it's an Arabic thing, isn't it? But anyway, so you look in towards the European languages because really they, France, Spain, England, they're the ones who've got colonies around the world that have spread their language already. But what sets English apart, or one of the things that sets English apart from from French and Spanish is we don't have this 
masculine, feminine within the language, you know, set endings. So that frees up English to have, you know, the endings like uh, diplomacy, diplomatic, you know, those endings can can be reserved for just that, otherwise you've just got way too many words if everything's going to be min, min, feminine, masculine, it's just... I don't think that needs to be in the language. You know, the, the, the language itself can... You know, there may be words that sound more feminine than others and are associated with things that are feminine, but, you know, in the language itself, what 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 is the point? Why is the table masculine or feminine? I mean we have to have, you know, a different ending just because we want to say it's feminine and masculine. It's just, yeah. God, God obviously didn't want it. <laughs> now, if we go back to, in, and use in the Bible, the, uh, the time when they, um, the, the Tower of Babel, and it says in the Bible, uh, when they're all speaking one language and this was just going to be way too easy for them. They were just going to, you know, develop way too fast. So let, let's mix it up. Let's mix up their languages. And, and so some of the sounds that we have in the modern English alphabet were not in other languages. And specifically this, what I've been looking into, the sound J. And so you didn't have that sound in other languages. So how, how, how they mixed, so the Tower Babel, you know, so they they almost took away sounds and, and, and that's perhaps why they, they had to make up sounds like <laughs> <laughs> which is not a hygienic way to talk. <laughs> you know, Fleming from the back of your throat, <coughs> like coughing, is not probably the best way <laughs> to avoid, uh, you know, diseases spreading. But that that's just a little bit not serious. But so so in a sense, in God's plan, it was to to reveal this information at the right time. So, without the letter J, they never had the chance to to uh, know the name of God and speak the name of God. And this has been troubling me as well. I don't know if this is a separate thing. No. This has been troubling me as well. Uh, the power of the name Jesus. Is there any power in the name Jesus? And my feeling is no. I'd like to ask some Spanish-speaking, English-speaking people if they prefer one or the other. That would be interesting. Um, and why I say I've been looking into it, I mean, I've been looking into, I've been watching a lot of documentaries on uh, European wars, you know, from about, well, from, you know, sort of 1100s on onwards, a bit before that, how many times England was this close to being totally overcome by the French or the Spanish or the Dutch. And, um, and, and then again in America, um, how they were succeeded in ensuring that America or would be covering all of America and speaking English. Obviously the Americans had quite a lot to do with that as well. But so there was a situation when America was fighting Mexico and Mexico at that time they had Texas, they had California and a few other states around there. And um, it was quite a hard war and um, so 
within God's plan. God's plan is to see that the English language becomes the international language and a language where we can speak God's name. Because I think the sound is more important than the than the the spelling. It's a bit um a bit weird in the Greek, you know, it, Jesus begins with an X. And I got to ask my mate, but um I don't think that's that's not the letter J because they didn't have the letter J either. And it's not a J sound, it's more of a cr I thought. Anyway, I need to um, check that, I don't know. But, however, however it manifested, God, God is very clever at um, making things just happen. <laughs> and I also think how, I've looked at how the English language has developed because it's been you know, it wasn't just made up at once, it was it was made up gradually, you know, Anglo Saxons and French and Latin and all sorts go in there. And so is it sort of created by the words we like? You know, a word has a certain sound, so you know, we're gonna have preference for words and they end up being the ones that continue and <coughs> <coughs> yeah because I think it's um, it's all very interesting language and there's there's more on that so so I think um, yeah that's why English is number one okay and the last thing I've got here is a uh, utopia there is you know, the new way, the way things are going to be for everyone in a thousand years. Uh, I mean, I've been thinking about this for a long time. I had a little help the other day listening to Channeling Eric, and he was asked the question, and it was the good medium, uh, he was asked the question, what's Earth going to be like in a thousand years? And I agreed with a lot of what he said. It fitted with what I already thought. And what I think what's been blocking me a bit lately, which is what their video helped with, is just thinking, you know, all the agriculture that goes on at the moment to produce all the bread and and the milk and and, and yeah, meat and everything, you know. There's so much food, and we, we got this real thing where we, you know, we need food. You know, all through history, you know, you got winter coming up. You need to stock up food. And so, what I say in Channel Eric in a thousand years' time, people are going to be eating a lot less food, and are going to get, uh, if you like, energy from more going within. You know. More, more from God in in my mind. So, you know, that makes sense to me. How how everything can be left to nature, and na nature can take back control of what gets grown where. Um, just leave it to nature, and then, so I can really imagine this utopia, where. You know, we all live much more spread out. And yeah, of course you're gonna have your your communities are gonna be your 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 nearby people. And um but there won't it won't doesn't mean you won't be able to travel further, because there will be something for that. But um you know, your immediate community people you can walk and see and I can just imagine families having their or single people whatever you man builds you build your own house that's everything left in nature 
do what you can do. You gotta build your own house. You gotta build your own shelter. Uh, and you know, in an evening, and be no street lights spoiling the sky. And you'll know the people around you. You'll be able to see their little light, like a, whatever we'll be using for light. What do they call those things? Lantern? Fire? And, yeah, I can just really imagine it now. I can just see it. And it'll be, it'll be so good. And everyone will understand their soul more. We'll be able to feel each other. Everyone... <laughs> oh, it's going to be awesome. So what have I got in here for Utopia? So yeah, that's, so that's the food. So no meat. It says right in the beginning of the Bible. You can say these are commandments if you like. You know, it says what God has given us in Genesis 1. What God gives us for food is the seed-bearing plants and the trees, the fruit which <laughs> grows on trees, which bear seed. Um, so maybe it doesn't include potatoes, but <laughs> I think we can have potatoes as well. Perhaps they missed that out. Um, but uh, plants, it says, at least, you know, leafy plants is for the food for the animals. So at that time the animals didn't eat other animals either. And kind of, you know, we have a big effect on our world. So we also affect the animals. So if we stop seeing ourselves as hunters, perhaps that will magically disappear from the animals and the lion will lay down with the lamb. Yeah, I pretty much said it. So, well done if you stayed with me. I'm not gonna sing a song or anything because <laughs> it's very late at night and my neighbours might not appreciate it. In fact, I think the guy on that side, I think he gets up at four. It's half past four now. But I haven't heard him get up. <clears throat> There's bound to be other things. I started writing a list. I, I'm sure there'll be other things. Um, I do think about people who watch my videos. No one gives me any likes, hardly. I don't know if that's because nobody likes it, or if because they don't want it appearing on their liked videos. Don't want to admit <laughs> that you believe in the seventh Christ. I want to write a book about it, but... Oh, I mean, there's a lot in there, but then... You know, I'm not finished thinking about this aspect, and that would get on my nerves. I don't know if I want to write a book. I want to just talk. It's easier. It's all good, though. I'm really feeling, you know, on the soul level, I'm really feeling it's good times. Good times are coming. It's all good. Feel everything with the heart. The heart, your heart is awesome. And just let everything go to the heart. It sorts it out, it knows what to do. And then you understand it kind of afterwards. But okay, I'll uh, see you next time.